Hello everybody, back here for again. So today I have a very special coin to share with you guys. Uh, you may well have seen the sneak peek last Wednesday, but today is the day that we have a good old close look at the one ounce gold Rwandan nautical Santa Maria coin. It is an absolute stunner and I have to say this is probably one of the uh, most amazing coins that I've ever seen. It's certainly one of my favourites of all time, if not my favourite of all time full stop. I think it's absolutely awesome. Uh, here it is in its glory. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do kind of a, an unboxing and review of everything uh, so you can see what it's all about, get it nice and close to the camera, you can have a look at all of the really intricate details that's on this coin. Uh, and then as well I want to talk about it in terms of an investment, talk about why I bought it, why I think it's a good coin to buy, or certainly it was a good coin for me to buy. Uh, remember though, uh, it's not going to be the same for everybody. Uh, so first off, let's have a look at the whole package and see what you get. Now, uh, there is one gripe with the box, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment, but that's why I'm not closing the box. But you do get a nice kind of leather stitched box here, actually very nice. I've seen a lot worse boxes uh, floating out there. Although, I have to say, I have seen better boxes, so it could be better. Now, the one gripe I do have with this box is if I if I closed it up and did the button up, it would push the coin back down into its little kind of hole here. And I find it incredibly difficult, if not nigh impossible, to get this out of there with my bare hands without kind of ripping the capsule open and potentially risking damaging the coin. Uh, so I've had to, like, pry it out a few times with a little... A uh, pair of tweezers and things. It's not really very practical. Now, maybe that's just bad luck. I've got a duff box. I don't know. If you've got this coin, do share with us as well whether you're having a similar issue. Now, look, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big problem, um, but pff, it's just a little bit annoying, especially when you're trying to make a YouTube video of it and you're trying to get it out on camera and it's just not working. Uh, but anyway, now then, COA, let's have a quick look at that before we jump into the coin. Uh, now, the COA could have been done better. Uh, I've seen better COAs in terms of quality. This is just printed a kind of basically on paper, really. Uh, not even that nicer paper. Uh, but anyway, it is kind of following on from the same style and theme that we saw from the uh, Rwandan rooster coins. I don't actually have any of the Rwandan rooster coins. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that in the future of, of why, but I've seen other people doing unboxing reviews, and these are the same kind of COAs that were in there as well. So there's all the particulars. I'm not going to talk in depth about them, other than to say it's obviously one ounce of gold, it's 999 gold, and uh, the mintage is 100, and that's quite important, and we'll talk about that later. The only other thing I'll say is you can see here that it says it's expertly struck by an authorised mint and issued by the Bank of Na uh, National Bank of Rwanda. So it's interesting that the mint isn't included on the COA, it's not actually commonly known, and in fact I don't really know exactly what mint it is. I've seen a few names floating out there, but I don't want to speculate, uh, but I think it's a German mint. So uh, interesting that the mint is not being kind of open about these, because these are freaking awesome coins, and you know, you'd expect them to be kind of blowing their own trumpet really. So here it is in all its glory, and you can see all of the intricate details on this coin. Absolutely awesome, look at that. And this is what I was really drawn to by the coin when I first saw it. Now, I first got wind of this coin actually through the Silver Forum, so there was a, a thread being put up by somebody who'd uh, obviously got wind of it and uh, you know got some photos, the kind of release photos of it, uh, and I just immediately knew that this was going to be a really popular coin. Uh, we've seen what happened with the Rwandan rooster uh, from 2006, uh, no, 2017, I think it was actually the year, uh, yeah, of course it was, 2017, Lunar Rooster. Um, so we saw what happened with that one, you know, mint release at like 1,500, 1,600 euros, and they're now trading hands for nearly 3,000 euros sometimes. Uh, so we've seen what happened there, and I thought this coin, you know, going on my rule of three, again, it's absolutely glorious, it looks amazing, the design is just so, so cool with the intricate details, uh, so it's very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, as well, I thought, you know, there's going to be quite a lot of interest and demand in this because of the how well the Rwandan Rooster series did. And again, we've seen the really micro mintage here of 100. So uh, absolutely, yeah, it was in my books of one to get. So I signed up for the notifications from goldsilver.be. I actually emailed my contacts that, had, that sort of my, almost like my account manager there because I organize these big group orders. I've almost got like a, a named contact that I can contact. Anyway, I signed up with them and as soon as they had them in, they let me know and I jumped straight on it and I picked one up at the kind of initial release price that the uh, the goldsilver.be were having, which is great. Anyway, look, I'm going to talk about prices on this in a little bit, but let's just admire the coin. So, you know, we've got here the Santa Maria. Now, the Santa Maria, for those who don't know, was one of the ships that Christopher Columbus used in his uh, first kind of expedition crossing over to find the Caribbean. Um, the Santa Maria, I think, was the flagship in that, and it is 
awesome in its detail. Look at all of the detail on the rigging, on the sails. I love the proof finish on the sails with the uh, matte finish behind the coin. Now you guys will probably have noticed this little mark here. This is actually on the inside of the capsule. It's not on the coin as you can see as I move it around, it's not on the coin. Um, so that's a little bit of a shame. It's on the inside of the capsule so I can't just kind of rub it off. Uh, I will be probably getting another capsule for this coin and then with the appropriate glove wear I'll be putting it in the new capsule. So uh, yeah, but otherwise this is absolutely great. Look at the detail on the compass. Absolutely adore that. Really, really intricate. And then of course we've got the top there as well which is the sort of telescope uh, and the kind of rope motif. Absolutely gorgeous. And then around the sides we've got one ounce fine gold, 999, 2017, and it's called the Nautical Ounce. Now, this is part of a new series, so we've seen, we've seen with the Rwandan Rooster, and then going into uh, year two, the, the next of the series, the Rwandan Dog, um, they have in fact increased the mintage of the second one in the series for the Lunars, uh, so hopefully, well I say hopefully, they probably will for this as well, but hopefully they'll keep them the same, I don't know. If they increase the mintage for future years, that will only help to inflate the value of this particular coin, so only time will tell. On the back of the coin we have the bank, uh, bank. here's going to be my awkward pronunciation, Bank Nakuru U of Rwanda, and uh, it's 100 uh, francs, so this is a denominated coin, uh, very very cool indeed. But again, on most of these types of things, you know, we've seen that on the back of pretty much every coin uh, that comes out of Rwanda, all of the uh, the um, Luna series and the, the other animal series, so uh, not a big surprise. Uh, but this is where all of the action is. Really, really cool. I absolutely adore it. I love the like the crisscross motifs of the globe behind as well. It's absolutely fantastic. And the detail of the of the water is fantastic, and the the fact that it's got Santa Maria uh, written in the water as well is fantastic as well. So as you can see, I like this coin. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Please do comment on this video what you think about it. You know, we've seen them in the silver proof. I have to say the gold proof is phenomenal. Now, I've bought a number of kind of one ounce gold coins in the past and these are part of my kind of pension stack. Uh, so this is kind of a little bit of both. Uh, but I have to say one thing, and I'll talk about all of the reasoning behind buying it in a moment. But one thing, I, last one, I, thing I want to say is just how thin this coin is. So it's a one ounce gold coin, but when you, I should have brought another gold coin down with me, but uh, I'll have to do a side by side comparison another time. Uh, but they're really thin, these coins, they're really thin. So here it is from the side profile, you can see uh, it's absolutely very thin indeed, and it's uh, huge. The diameter is very big, so it looks fantastic, loads of detail on it, really happy with that. So why did I buy it? Now, this, as I said, is a, uh, it's a kind of bit of a both type investment for pension and for kind of, you know, premium coins. You know, I do like to buy coins with a premium, uh, you know, collector's coins and things like that. And I've done other um, collector's sets and things like that in the past where I would look to, you know, maybe keep them for a long time. This one, only time really is going to tell. You know, in terms of how well it's performed in the first couple of months, it has performed incredibly well. And we've seen, we've in fact seen quite a lot of, I would say, slightly underhanded mint tactics, like I think there was uh, a tactic used by Appmex where they, they obviously had a number of these in stock or had a number of them to sell, but they would release basically one at a time and then increase the price of the next one that they were selling. Uh, and I think they capped out at like three and a half thousand dollars or something like that, so roughly kind of just under three thousand pounds, so huge, huge differences. I mean, goldsilver.b, they did a similar thing. They did increase the price a little bit, but I don't think they had as many in stock. And certainly when I bought it, it was right at the start and I got it for kind of 1,600 euros. Uh, now, 1,600 euros sounds like an awful lot of money for buying one ounce of gold. And you're right, it is. Uh, so premiums on these are huge. You know, it was 50, 60% premiums on these. Uh, and obviously if there was a, you know, an emergency situation, then selling this coin right now would be, uh, you know, possible I could just take it in and get uh, you know its weight in gold back, but uh, you know it's going to be a tough sell to try and get its full value if I was to try and do that. Which means for me, it's a longer term investment. It's one which I'm going to see how it appreciates over time. You know, there there is a lot of argument to be made that you could say you could sell it right now for maybe I don't know two and a half thousand. I'm looking on goldsilver.b right now, and they're listed at two and a half thousand euros, but they're out of stock. So, you know, you could probably sell them directly back to goldsilver.b for you know, 2,000, 2,300 euros, and I could cash in a, a, a nice little profit of four, 500 euros. However, I do think it's got a lot more room to grow. I think we've seen how it's gone with the Rwandan rooster, which is unfortunately one I didn't uh, jump on when that first came out. And I'll tell you for why as well, because 
you know, I think that big premium really kind of put me off. I didn't know how it would perform. I don't think anybody really knew truly how it would perform. And if you did, uh, then you are a bit of a genius. But it's the same with a lot of coins. You know, sometimes these things go through the roof, like the like the swans or the, uh, you know, the Dragon and Phoenix Minteras and things like that. You just don't really know ahead of time. And if we did, we'd all be millionaires. However, so, uh, so get back to point, I didn't buy the Random Rooster. I thought at the time it was a little bit too much of a risk in terms of the premium. However, obviously I was completely proved wrong. Uh, it was a very, very good buy for those who did it. And then when this came along, I felt that it had a very, very good chance of doing just as well as the Rooster. It's a new series, so it's a new one, new first release in the series. So hopefully there will be lots more to come. I don't quite know how many, maybe 10, I think somebody, I seem to remember Shadow Suck saying there'd be 10, but I could be wrong. Um, so, you know, I felt that that would be another great opportunity to get in the start of a series. If they're going to increase the mintage as the years go on, that's only going to improve the chances of this coin being a very, very good performing coin in terms of the added premium that it might get for collectors. Um, so only time will tell. And I, you know, weighed everything up thinking about it and, uh, and I looked at it like this. If it fails, if it just completely fails and I have to sell it or if, uh, you know, I just hold on to it for 30 years, I will get my money back eventually. Now, I won't, might not get kind of the full uh, weight of my premiums back uh, in that sense, but, uh, you know, if I sold this in 30 years time for spot price and let's say spot price was two and a half thousand pounds an ounce, maybe it'll be more than that. Who knows? I don't even know. But anyway, I would still make money on it and it would still be OK and... I wouldn't feel too bad about it. And that's, I think, a really important thing to kind of put into perspective. So if you're out there and you love this coin and you want to buy this coin, but you're looking at it right now and the cheapest ones you can find anywhere are like 2,000, you know, 3,000 pounds, 2,000 euros or whatever it might be, really weigh that up in your mind because I do personally think that getting, it, getting in at the mint price was fantastic, but I still do think these have got a lot of room to grow in terms of them as a premium coin and... Hopefully that will just, you know, keep on growing as the rest of the series comes out. Only time will tell. But anyway, enough about all of that. Do let me know your thoughts on uh, on everything. I think they're absolutely fantastic. Let me know your thoughts as well on the kind of mint tactics that we've seen as well, because I don't personally agree with the big mints like Atmex having, let's say they had 10 of them and then they increase the price one by one as they sell them. I don't agree with that. I think that's very opportunistic. However, I do see the arguments on the other side basically saying that a mint should be able to sell them for whatever they want to sell them for. But I, I always sort of look at it like this, you know, if I had, well, like with my 100 gram silver foreign bars, you know, we've got like 35, 40 of them left now. If I started upping the price because I've got less of them left, I'd be, I'd be done. I'd be lynched. You know, you guys would kick up a fuss. Silver foreign members would kick up a fuss. I think that's not really very fair. Um, you know, if anything, in the future, I'd probably look to reduce the price such that we can actually shift the remaining amounts of them. But, you know, that's the way it goes. So do let me know your thoughts on kind of the opportunistic mint tactics there. I personally don't agree with them, but I do understand, you know, everybody's out there to make a buck, everybody's out there to make some money. But that's just the way the world works. We are sadly driven by money. But anyway, look, I've rambled on for a very long time now about this coin. Do comment in this video about the coin. If you like the coin, if you like this video, if you like this review, thumbs up, remember. Please do share it around on social media as well. That would be very helpful. Also, please make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, if you uh, hit that little alarm bell, you'll get a notification when I upload future videos. Otherwise, guys, all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, review of this coin. It's by far and away my favourite coin of all time, I think. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.